Today we're going to talk about the Harry's Technique. The Harry's Technique is a pretty popular handheld flashlight technique, handheld shooting technique. So there's a reason for that. Number one, it's very stable for being a one-handed shooting uh, technique. It's not two-handed just because these two are touching doesn't mean you're getting proper isometric tension because you're not. Um, it's the, the way to do it properly is something that you can learn in class, but it, it, this definitely isn't it. It's more like this. I'm not going to go over the specifics on how to get in that perfect position because this is, a, this is not a video teaching you how to do this technique. This is basically just my perception from what I've learned. So if you're looking to go do training, uh, then I, I'm just using this as an encouragement for you to practice a good amount and pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, and also some limitations I found that uh, you might want to explore or, you know, heck, if you think that I may be a little off, ask your instructor, teacher, coach, whatever they want to call themselves. So, anyways, this seems to me to be a very good uh, technique for uh, keeping, uh, keeping your pistol stable as much as you can for one-handed uh, one shooting with a flashlight. And also, you're able to follow, uh, you're able to process and assess, uh, you know, information that you're gathering from a no light to low light, you know, uh, room situation. So when you're shining your light around, you're taking in information and you're processing it. So <clears throat> uh, that's why you have a light, right? This technique is for somebody that already has their gun out. Let's just be clear about that, and I'll touch on that in a little bit. But you can do it one of two ways. So you can do it from what I, uh, from what I learned is the hunter position, which is like this. It's like a compressed ready. So basically, you're you're just like this. You're kind of offset, and all you have to do is you search around with your light, and then you identify and you snap into the uh, snap into the Harry's technique, and you basically it's just the Harry's technique folded up. That's all it is. So you go from here, you have a very wide angle. You have a very wide angle. You can see everything. If you were to aim in, you're losing about 25 to 30% of that. From what, from my analysis, I'm, I, from all the time I spent practicing this with, you know, different lights, I'm losing 30, almost 30% of the area that I could be assessing by aiming in while I'm searching, where I could I could be compressing it even just a little bit. I could be compressing it and um, just pulling it back or rotating, um, rotating this way, going around barriers like so. And you know I'm losing more and more of that as I get out. So it's getting in my way. This whole hold right here, this flashlight and the pistol are getting in my way of being able to see things. That's the weakness of it. However, it keeps your light and your pistol together. Some of these other techniques, your hands are doing different things, but this hand has to play catch up with this one. This one's doing most of the work until there is a threat and then you have to keep this one stable and on target while this one does some work. So it, it can be a little bit of, a bit of a challenge in my experience until you get more time on all these different techniques. And with the Harry's, it does very well at keeping these hands bonded together. It's very stable for one-handed shooting. Um, the problem is that, uh, as I said before, this is not a very good technique to use, to snap into if you have an immediate threat. Here's the thing. You know how they always say, uh, if you're going to have a weapon-mounted light, you also need to have a handheld light. The handheld light is for admin stuff. However, if there is a threat, basically it turns into your primary source of light, <clears throat> if the situation dictates. If there's a threat, you know, a while away, uh, and you have, if the situation allows, and there's time that allows you to pull out your pistol, if you have a weapon mounted light, and flick it on, and transition to that primarily, then of course you're going to do that. But if you have a handheld light, the closest thing to a weapon mounted light you're going to be able to get into is probably the Harry's or one of the other techniques that is like a, two, a pseudo two-handed technique if the gear will allow you to, which this won't 
allow me to get a proper, you know, uh, uh, do that technique properly. Um, this is the closest I can get to a weapon mounted light, but I had time to be able to maneuver my hand around it. If I was in imminent uh, danger and I needed that pistol now and I needed shots into the into that target now, um, I don't think I want to be sitting here juggling. And even when I practice, I found that I was hitting my own hand trying to juggle around because I'm focused on this threat and I'm trying to keep the light on them while I'm juggling around and I'm flagging myself. Of course, I have an unloaded pistol here, but I, I would find myself trying to go over flagging myself and I just decided it wasn't an acceptable risk. I couldn't snap into this fast enough. Of course, if you spend enough time, you probably snap into it pretty fast, but it'll never, with all that time that you spend trying to coordinate all these complex movements, you'll have built up enough of a reaction and efficiency to just be able to snap right into place and take care of a very close threat, a very imminent threat. So it's a waste of time, basically, to try to stick with the Harrys as your best support for one-handed shooting. I, I don't think it's safe enough and I don't think it's efficient uh, to try to snap into the Harry's technique uh, from, from the holster, uh, concealed or unconcealed, or inside or outside the waistband. So that's just been my, uh, my find. Of course, you could probably get fast enough to do it. There's risks involved, obviously. If you want to accept them, whatever. I, I'm just explaining from my point of view, it's too unsafe. And I had too many problems just practicing dry. I have no interest at this mo at this point of practicing it on the range. So, anyways, uh, I appreciate all of you watching this video. Go ahead and leave a comment below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys uh, in a further videos discussing different handheld light techniques and weapon mounted light uh, techniques.